And we are back with some bonus content with Richard Wolf, Professor Emeritus at uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst, host of the program Economic Update on Free Speech TV, a visiting professor at the New School in New York City. And Richard, we were talking in the main program, we were talking about um, uh, either ways in which the capitalist system, the current system, exploits families and friendships. We didn't really get into friendships, but certainly families and human relationships. One of the things I wanted to talk about with you uh, now is uh, I've been very encouraged and, and intrigued to see, particularly among younger activists, I've worked in the activist community for a long time, progressive community for a long time, and I feel that one thing that's new about younger activists now, particularly the ones that come from the young left, the uh, Democratic Socialists of America and so on, and I mean, I know people have frustrations always when there's movement activism, and I know there are conflicts, and I don't mean to idealize it, but I have this feeling that people are genuinely more we-oriented than they used to be. I, I, I mean, I was in high school when the, um, the student movement against the Vietnam War, the peace movement, uh, was was in full swing. I participated in that somewhat, um, and a little bit more in college. But there, and a lot of people have written about this, while it was all about love and peace and communion, there was a lot of male chauvinism, there was a lot of hierarchical attitude brought into the process. I really, maybe I'm being Pollyannish, but I feel as if the new young left is bringing a different interpersonal psychology to the process, or is beginning to. And I want to know. I'm curious to know a whether you have sensed the same thing, and b whether there are ways we can encourage this and nurture it. Well, I, I agree with you. I have the same feeling. You know, I I participate myself, but I'm also a college teacher, which means I spend a good bit of my time with people that are between 18 and 25 or 26 years of age, because that's who are mostly in my classes and so on. Um, and yes, I think these, this is a generation that has been shaped with a uh, anti-racist consciousness, a feminist consciousness, an environmentalist consciousness that, that people on the left in the 1950s and 60s simply didn't have. We had not uh, developed or matured or whatever the word is you want uh, culturally and politically and ideologically uh, than the way we have now. And just as I know that the upsurge of the left starting in the 1930s and continuing in through the 1960s played its role in making possible the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, the ecology movements. So it goes in reverse as well. Those movements, stimulated in part by the left, are now reacting and shaping the left and stimulating mm. and, and developing it. And it's a back and forth, as it should be. And, and it, the bottom line is that I think you're sensing something that is genuinely there. We will not be as hobbled in this phase of a, of a criticism of capitalism. We will not be as hobbled by um, gender differences and race differences and, and, and a blindness to the ecological disasters around us the way we were before. And that brings us, for example, just to use the ecology for a minute, that's a whole nother movement in this country. It's a whole nother a way that people can become activated, can become excited, that there is something going on in the world that they can understand and maybe have some influence on. And I'm confident, even though I wish it would go faster, that the people caught up in the environmental movement will find their way to a coalition, to an alliance with people who are more focused on the problem of capitalism or the problem of uh, racial injustice or the problem of gender inequality, that these differently focused, and I understand and accept that pe different people have different priorities, but you can have your priority on any one of these and appreciate the need for an alliance with other people who can strengthen your program for what you prioritize in exchange for you participating in what they prioritize, and that will make a movement strong enough to change the society. 
you know, it's, a, it, it, it's such a terrific vision, and, a, and it's certainly what I hope for. And to me, one of the key uh, principles that uh, behind that is the notion of uh, cooperation versus competition, right? I mean, we have an e economic system that encourages competition, that I, I, idealizes competition, that gives uh, attributes to competition qualities that it does not actually have of improving the participants and so on, and, um, and an intelligence, a kind of broad self improving intelligence that it also, in my opinion, does not have. And uh, cooperation, I mean, you see it, I, I see it at least, in different ways in young people. One of the moments that I think of, and I don't mean just young people, I mean, when I worked for Bernie in 2016, he would reflect that from time to time, time too. So it's not just a young thing, but, but uh, the new movement as it arises. Uh, I think, for example, of a moment in the debate between... Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Joe Crowley for the Democratic congressional nomination in, in their district when it was assumed that Crowley would get it. And he, Crowley thought he was being clever in this debate. So assuming that he would get it, he said, I will support you if you get the nomination. Will you support me if I get the nomination? He thought he was trapping her, I guess. And uh, her answer was, I'm part of a movement. We make big decisions together. I'm paraphrasing, but um, so I'm not going to give an answer to that right now. I want to know what my movement thinks. And that to me, tiny moment, but a reflective. I can't imagine any politician of any stripe in the 1960s or 1970s saying I'm part of a movement. That to me was basically saying we, we get our best work done when we think collectively and act collectively. Um, your description, and we're seeing it now, for example, the, the Parkland school shooting survivors are reaching out to other areas of political change uh, in order to collaborate with them. The Sunrise Movement, the Green New Deal acknowledges a kind of holistic nature of you need to change the system under which people work uh, with a jobs guarantee if you're going to make the kinds of changes we want to make in our consumption of fossil fuels and so on. So uh, the cooperation versus competition, that makes sense, right? Absolutely. I, I, I would like to mention the Green New Deal. I thought that was a brilliant name because in those three words, you see the coming together. The New Deal was about coping with the collapse of capitalism giving people jobs, giving people incomes, giving people unemployment insurance. It was about challenging capitalism, which didn't give people any of those things, by demanding that a government of all the people step in and do what a failed capitalism was unable to do. Wow, that's the New Deal. To put the word green in front of it literally says, let's combine the movement to save the climate and to save our environment natural environment with the movement to properly provide decent lives for people economically. So it literally embodies this kind of fert cross-fertilization, whatever words you want, that brings these constituent movements together, no longer afraid as they were for so long during the Cold War, no longer afraid to put the economic inequality and the economic issues right up there together with issues of racial equality and gender equality and preserving the environment and so on. That's, I think, a crucial breakthrough for, for a new left in the United States. And it's a way of saying, I agree with everything you said, and, and I think it's a way of also acknowledging that you cannot fix the problems created by the current system without changing the current system. That right. it, the tool and that not does... Being, and not being afraid to say that, to raise that question. It's not because I have all the answers or that the people who think we have to change the system have all the answers, but they are putting it on the agenda where it should have been for the last 75 years, and we all owe them a debt for making that happen now. And there's a million other things I'd love to ask you about, but I think ending on fearlessness is a great place to end. So we'll have to do that. I'll have to save my other questions for another time. But Richard Wolf, is always a, a great pleasure talking with you. And thank you so much. Thank you also, Richard. And I look forward to continuing it with you next time. As do I.